<laughs> oh, there's a new post from Rise of Kingdoms. Let's see. A mysterious civilization is coming to Rise of Kingdoms. Okay, so on the left it says Pharaoh. In the middle we have a pyramid. And on the back we have ancient Egyptian carvings on the wall. That's gotta be ancient Greece. What's going on my beautiful governors? Welcome to a new Rise of Kingdoms video. Today I'm gonna give you guys five more tips. And as always, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. These tips are not game breaking. They are not hacks or something like that. But in the long run, they will definitely give you a lot of value or they will save you a lot of time. Without further ado, let's start with tip number one and let's go. Spartans, what is your profession? Tip number one is maximum troop count. Let me explain you what I mean by that. Let's say I'm going to pull out my, my Atatakeda, right? I have 210k troops. But let's say if I use an expansion, I'm just going to do it for the sake of the video. A four hour basic army expansion, which will increase my troop count 25%. I use this, let's say I'm in KVK, uh, we are fighting, or let's say we are in Ark of Osiris. If I do this, as you can see, this is not my max troops with 25k. 260k is my max troop with a 25% uh, expansion. So every single time I'm going to pull out a march, I need to, let's do this, I need to drag this, right? Every single time. First, I think this is quite annoying. And second, it's going to cost me more time. It's going to waste my time. To prevent this, here's what you can do. Go to campaign, expedition, go to this green one, which is city defense. What you can do is click on challenge and here if you click on this one you are going to decide your city defense right and look at the troop count 750k this means i can do this for example my atatakeda right max this with 750k save this instead of my previous atatakeda which is only has 220k units Confirm. Let's do the same thing with my uh, for my Guan Yu and Leonidas. Just max this and save this, right? As you can see now, my slot number one and slot number two has 750k troops. And then I can just go back. Now, if I use my marches, click on my marches, boom, 260k, 260k. And the beauty is if I apply a 50% now instead of 25 it doesn't matter since we saved it as 750k in expedition if i use this now it's going to use maximum number of troops no matter what so by doing this you don't need to drag this all the way up before you put much on the field every single time as i said this is going to save you a lot of time and it is annoying why not just go to expedition do what i did and every single time you use an expansion you will have maximum number of troops automatically tip number two might sound weird but it is one tier one cavalry troop as you can see i have one t1 cav the reason is actually simple if you have i don't want to say good but let's say experienced if you have an experienced leadership every single day you will have something like this slow build send only one troop what this will give you is it's going to be either a flag or a fort every single day they are going to destroy it and build it again for you to send one troop and get your daily 20k alliance credit you can get up to 20k alliance credit every single day by building that's the one reason why you want to have that and it's not only alliance buildings let's say there is a training event or power up event and i want to participate so i want to get this training speed room right so it's 82 kilometers away from my city. If I click gather, here is my one troop cavalry, right? It is Belisarius and double C for the maximum speed. Seven minutes and 43 seconds. If I do the same with T5, nine minutes and 39 seconds. It's going to cost me two minutes to grab the rune and another extra two minutes when I recall them back. So every single time, if I go ahead and grab that rune and call my marches back, it's going to cost me extra four minutes of my playtime. Same goes for T4 troops. As you can see, nine minutes again, but it is a lot slower than your T1. So always you want to have one T1 cavalry to grab the runes, to participate in buildings, all that good stuff with your fastest commanders. Train that T1 horseman. And keep using it to save a lot of time in the long run. Tip number three is 
subscribe to Spartan Gaming. I am the one, the I'm just kidding, but why not? We are sharing lots of tips, lots of guides. It only takes one second of your time and helps the channel a lot. That would be great if you hit the like, hit the subscribe. Thank you and let's go to actual tip number three. This is about gold stars and commander level. But before the tip, I'm going to explain a few basic things for new players. So if you're an experienced player, skip to the next part. But if not, please watch it carefully. The thing is, why we want to have level 60 commanders? It's because of the talents. For example, my Guan Yu is level 60 because I want to have maximum amount of talents. Every single time I upgrade him a level, he's going to get one more talent point. But the talent points are actually doesn't apply for the second commander. So the talents of my, let's say, YSG, I'm using, I don't know, like Ramses YSG. The talents of YSG doesn't matter. Only the talents of your primary commander applies. So what is the reason to get a commander that's going to be secondary all the time to level 60? There is literally no reason. All you need is four stars to upgrade every single skill. And that's it. Now we can move on the actual tip. And it is the cheapest way to get a commander to four stars. Let's pick a level 10 commander. We might need to try it a few times, but I'm going to show you 100%. We have a bunch of level 10 commanders. When a commander is level 10, click on this. And we are going to put four regular stars. What are we trying to do is get him a lot of level, but don't give him enough to put him on the next level. If it gets crit, he's going to go to level two. We don't want that. Let's hope that it doesn't get crit. Let's see. Develop. Oh my God. Lilith. What? Come on now. Let's do the same for Artemisia. Four. Okay, so it didn't get crit. Now we can apply four of these and two of these. As long as we are up from 40%, we are 40% plus, we are good to go. And by adding these two, as you can see right now, the, the critical luck is only 20%. If I add these two, because these two stars, if you guys didn't know, gives less percentage, but it gives a lot of luck. So right now we have 60% luck to get a critical on this one. So if we get it, Artemisia will go to four stars when she is only level 10. Let's see. Please give me that crit. Boom. Max level goes up to 40. Three new skills. She was only level 10 and we unlocked every single skill. But of course, Artemisia is a great primary. So I just used her as an example. She needs to be a primary commander. So you definitely want to get her to level 60. Tip number four is choosing the right civilization for your role specifically. For example, first I'm going to ex explain my civilization and then I'm going to give you a few options, a few choices. I'm an infantry main, so I could have gone with Rome, France or Vikings. Back in the day, I was using France for 20% hospital healing speed because I'm a super low spender. If you guys don't believe, here's an example on your screen. Recharge event ends today and I haven't bought anything at all. So you guys know that I'm a super low spender. I was using France because of the hospital healing speed with that 20%. You can save up so many healing speed ups, right? And, and we need it as a low spender. But then I switch to Vikings because I max my Attila and Takeda. So there is a really, how do I say, like niche reason why I choose Vikings over France because Attila Takeda is all about counter attack damage and normal attack damage. Vikings is an infantry civilization, so it matches with my main troop type. But on top of that, it gives me plus 3% counter-attack damage. And my Atatakeda can also benefit from this, and that's why I went with Vikings. But for a free-to-play, for a low spender in Rise of Kingdoms, if you're an infantry main, France is great if you're fighting. Germany is simply the best free-to-play low spender civilization because it gives you training speed plus action point recovery. So every single day, you can actually kill 10% more barbarians or destroy 10% more forts, barbarian forts. So that's why Germany is like perfect. But if you're a spender and if your main is cavalry, which means you most likely lead rallies, then Arabia is the best one for you. And if you're an archer player, definitely Ottoman is like the best civilization in the game, in my opinion. It gives archer health. It gives march speed. And it gives 5% active skill damage. Like this civilization is hands down the best one 
in Rise of Kingdoms, Archers, Ottoman, Spenders, Cavalry, Arabia, free-to-play players in general, Germany regardless of the troop type, and if you're like a low spender infantry, France is great. If you're an infantry player who spends in the game, then Rome and Vikings are both great civilizations. If you're like me, if you have an Atatakeda, you can go with Vikings, or if you have, on top of that, I also have Herald. So if you're using plus Epakal Herald, then Vikings would be amazing for you. The next tip is kind of depends on your server and your leadership, but I'm just going to talk about it anyways. My tip is perform better so you can grow better. Here's what I mean. If we take a look at our server, we have lions, we have tigers, and we have pandas. There are a bunch of spenders in all these three alliances. Great people, they also spend in the game, which gives you a lot of gold chests. But for example, in my alliance, I'm in 93D at the moment. We have great players, great fighters, but not many spenders. So as you can see, there are like literally no gold chests, no silver chests. Like those chests gives you lots of speed ups. And the most important thing is they give you a lot of VIP points. If you're in a Veil Alliance, you can easily get to VIP 14 because you're going to get a lot of VIP points from the gold chests. And what I mean by perform better and grow better is this. Two KVKs ago, if you guys don't know, I've started creating content just recently, a few months ago. So I wasn't creating content. I was super occupied with my life and all that. And I performed really bad in that KVK. I was in Toxic Tigers, 93T, shout out to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. If you perform really bad, like I did two KVKs ago, they will send you to another alliance. And I was sent to 93A, which also has amazing people in it, but literally zero spenders. So if I had the time and the commitment, I was still in the Toxic Tigers. I will most likely be VIP 16 already but since i performed bad in that kvk i was sent to 93a but on our previous kvk i performed really well i mean at least i reached the goal my kingdom gave me so i was promoted to 93d and if i perform really well again in this kvk i might have a place in p t or l at the end of the kvk and thanks to the spenders in these three alliances i can grow a lot faster that's why i said t4s meant to fight and t5s meant to die i killed so many of my t5s and i generated so many points for my kvk progression and that's why now i'm not in 93a but i'm in 93d so perform better so you can grow better our tip number five is try to participate in every single event in rise of kingdoms instead of just going all in on one for example right now i have 14k gems and yesterday we had cpo wheel of fortune and i only need 65 sculptures to max out my cpo what i could have done is i could just spend all my gems spin the wheel as much as i can and then i could get as many sculptures as i can to max out my cpo and then max him out but i didn't i just spin it to 10 because i want to save those gems let's say if there is a more than gems event or if there is an egg event yes i could get a few more sculptures by spending all my gems but then I wouldn't be able to participate in those events that requires me to spend a certain amount of gems. Don't you ever go all in in one event, especially if you are free to play slash a low spender in Rise of Kingdoms. So that was today's five tips in Rise of Kingdoms to get more value or save a lot of time. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you think any part of the information was useful or helpful so far, please hit the like. Please hit the subscribe. It helps the channel more than you think. Thank you so much for watching. I see you on the next one. Bye.